people get the idea that if you're saying woke things while standing your ground, that it will automatically make the people you're addressing come to your side. Or that the way you're labeling someone is an intelligent, short, but descriptive label. That they'll realize the wrong in their ways and change, just for you. When you do this, where do you get this idea that you've really accomplished something other than making yourself feel good and maybe others who think exactly the same way as you, you know, if they saw it or if you show it to them? Oh, you really showed them. If they don't understand, they're just stupid. I don't know, with some people it's kind of like believing in magic words. If you say the right words, you change the scenario. If you're able to break what's in front of you into parts using a formal methodology, then you change what it actually is and what it means. So this over here is diversity and wokeness, and this over here is fascism and racism. Nuance doesn't matter. What the scenario was actually about doesn't matter. Your standardized way of breaking it apart is what matters. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people on the right, particularly a lot of Republicans here in the United States, do this a lot with religion. All of the stuff that I mentioned throughout this video can be applied to Bible-based religious people, or some Bible-based religious people. Just replace woke with religious. So, you know, if you can break a scenario into parts using a religious methodology, you change what it actually is and what it means. This over here is righteous and holy, and this over here is evil and satanic. Again, nuance doesn't matter. What it actually is doesn't matter. Your standardized way of breaking it apart is what matters. You know, th this, this comic book to the woke side might be, you know, it's all about uh, patriarchy and look at the way that they, they uh, objectify women and uh, all this is bad. And then if you look at the religious side of it, it's all about, oh, look, look at this satanic imagery and uh, look what, what it's teaching people. And yeah, I mean, depends on how you break it apart, right? Using some sort of standard methodology, right? And we can make fun of religious people who exude this behavior all we want, and there's no problem. But it's supposed to be off limits to make fun of the woke person for the same behavior. Because if we make fun of the woke person, we'll be told that we don't care about the well-being of minorities and women. Granted, the religious person we make fun of will either cower, you know, be silent, or tell us rubbish, like, oh, we're satanic or degenerates, which makes us laugh. And unfortunately, if we laugh at the people saying that we don't care about the well-being of minorities and women, they'll use it as proof that we don't actually care, and they'll go around telling as many people as possible about how awful we are. Maybe see how they can affect our lives in a negative way. The thing is, the religious person who gets criticized for it is kind of used to being treated that way. They've learned since the late 1960s, but especially after, you know, especially during the 1990s and afterwards, that if you spew the really stupid, judgmental parts of your religion and try to cram it down people's throats who aren't really interested, many of them will fight you back with words and tell you how stupid you're being. You know, religious people have generally learned that it's not good to start that kind of fight. They're even conscious that, hey, if they do that, they are trying to start a fight. They're at least conscious of that. They learned that their views are not something you tell everyone. Most importantly, they've learned when to shut up. Not that they have to shut up, and not that all of them do shut up. It's just that they're more aware of what will happen if they don't. They'd rather not deal with the pushback or the negativity. They realize that it spreads negativity, no matter how much they might think that it's full of love. And this same thing needs to eventually happen to woke people. 
Nobody cares if you acquired this information while going for your doctorate at the most prestigious university in the United States. You know, at some point, you need to get used to the fact that when you push this woke shit on people, they're not going to take it well. You need to realize that, yeah, you're sometimes going to get criticized for pushing that onto people. It doesn't matter how right you think you are. It doesn't matter how educated you think you are. There's a time when you just need to let people have the beliefs they have. If they're racist, they're racist. It's not your lucky day where you'll magically change who someone is and how they think if you criticize their words and behaviors enough. There will always be racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic people out there. Always. And I don't say the word always lightly. I'm usually the person that basically says, never say always. Never say never. But in this case, there are always going to be people that you consider bigoted in those ways. And until this recent Trump era, usually most people are trying their best to treat other people decently. If you can't recognize that, then you are the one with the problem. Now, I'm certainly not trying to suggest that everyone is trying to treat each other decently. Especially, as I said, during this Trump era, where everyone just seems to tell it like it is. No matter how caustic or nasty it is to say. During this Trump era, there are some people who just seem to get their jollies off of making people feel bad. And for the people that are terrible at making people feel bad with words, they'll usually start resorting to force. Who do you think is better at making people feel bad with words? It's certainly not the left. The left are usually pretty terrible at making people actually feel bad with words. They'll try to say some sort of description, again, as if it's going to change someone. So when they can't get them with words, they'll try to get them with some sort of actions. And with this, they've become a lot more ruthless in the past five years, but especially this past year. The right wing has always been good at insults. They're good at memes. They're good at marketing their message, too, regardless of how utterly repugnant their message is. You know, when a right winger insults you, there's a chance it might actually really make you feel bad, whether you're going to admit it or not. You don't want to get in a right winger's crosshairs, if you're the type of person they're really good at making fun of, there's a fear of what they'll say. I'm certainly not saying this is a good thing. If a left-winger insults you, an extreme left-winger, poorly like it usually is, and you don't respond to their insult by, you know, admitting that they might be right about their insult, which they don't look at as an insult, they'll look at it as a description, They'll try to make you feel bad by fucking something up in your life. Or threaten to fuck up something in your life. There's a fear that they'll mess up your life. And that, as well, isn't a good thing. Now, I'm making generalizations. I'm taking things to more of their extremes. But it's to show a point that, again, as I say a lot of the times, both sides are fucked up. The extremes of both sides are fucked up. But I have been criticizing the left more than I have the right. And that's because I think we can do better. I think we can do a lot better. Look, to some people who seem to want to eventually make it illegal to be racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic, just know that it's completely authoritarian and unjust. You can regulate businesses, but you can't regulate people's minds no matter how repugnant you think their thinking patterns are. You know, and this next part goes for both sides. If they're not actually hurting anyone, and they're not pushing their shitty views on anyone, then how they think is none of your fucking business. How they live is none of your fucking business. Now, if they've gone out of their way to bring you directly into something, yeah, you can say it's, it's, it's your business, but that's not what people usually do. You simply having to tolerate people thinking and living differently than you is not getting you directly involved, okay? It's none of your fucking business. 
Now, I mean, obviously, if you see someone hurting someone else, yeah, that, that can be a problem. And I'm talking about things that are harmless. They don't hurt anyone. So, no matter how miserable you try to make things, or you want to make things, for people who you think are bigoted, they're still going to be bigoted. No amount of misery will change that. No amount of attempted indoctrination will change that. China is not going to change the minds of those that they have in concentration camps. You know, the Muslims there, that they have in concentration camps. You do know about that, right? Should be something that we're outraged at, but guess it's not important because it's in China, right? Because, you know, if you say bad things about China, that's racist or something, right? Anyway. And let me be perfectly clear. I am in no way trying to say that being racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic is a good thing, or is something desirable, or anything like that. I'm just saying that those things are always going to be there, no matter how many old people die off. You know, as much as I hate Trump, and I'm glad that it's likely that he's not going to get a second term, something that would have been nice for our society to learn if Trump did get a second term, would be that no matter how much you scream, break things, set things on fire, call people names, or genuinely make people feel bad, it's not going to change how they think or who they are. It doesn't matter what methods you use to make people feel bad or to make people fear you, it's not going to change who they are or how they think. It seems that there's a point where we must learn these lessons. I don't know how that's going to happen. If Trump would have had a second term, I suppose it could have happened through an ugly and bloody civil war. But you know, I'm the person that tries to argue for harm reduction, probably to a fault. But you know, this, this sort of thing could still happen under Biden. We just don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching.